Tom Piker faces backlash. Oh my god, my brother's gonna flip, dude. He loves. He loves Philly. Philly D. Stop, you beautiful bastards. I hope you've had a fantastic Monday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show. Today's show is primarily different because I'm recording it at five o'clock in the morning from a bathroom because uh, I'm technically on vacation. Uh, and I promised my wife that uh, if I did shoot the show, it would not interrupt with family time. So here we are. Uh, hit that like button for the dedication. Subscribe to I join the pee. family. I'll be back in one Let's second. just jump into it. The first thing that we're going to talk about today, easily one of the most requested stories is this huge backlash that we saw against Hassan Piker over the weekend. Now, if you don't know, Hassan is a left wing and socialist streamer and commentator. And, you know, there's been backlash and controversy in the past, but this time we saw a massive amount of pushback and backlash because it came out that he had purchased a 3,800 square foot home in West Hollywood for $2.74 million. With people arguing that it's hypocritical and unethical for someone who advocates for socialism and makes money doing so to then spend so much money on a house instead of redistributing that wealth. With people saying things like, do you not see the issue with getting rich, complaining about capitalism, and then buying a $3 million house in gentrified LA while homelessness is skyrocketing there? And I don't know, man, it's just flat out unethical to be profiting off of socialism and buying yourself a $3 million home in a state that is one of the highest homelessness rates in the country, right? It wasn't just on Twitter. There were a ton of articles coming out about this. You had Fox News covering this. But also with this, you had a ton of people defending him, saying, uh, one, Hassan does not make his money in an exploitive way since it comes from Twitch donations. And two, it's okay for a person to use the money that they make to buy a house for themselves and their families. And Los Angeles real estate does not come cheap. This, including Ethan Klein, who said, y'all really think Hassan shouldn't be able to own a nice house and also champion for the poor and underprivileged? There is a difference between making millions on Twitch and paying 50% in taxes and Jeff Bezos being worth $150 billion and paying no taxes. Happy Hassan is crushing it. With others saying things like Hassan can't make bank as a streamer while professing leftist values? Is bitching about Bernie Sanders selling books and having a second house on the agenda next do we have time for aoc wearing an expensive dress on a magazine cover too get your by the way that lexi person got precisely what they wanted right like this was this was precisely what they wanted like all of these people that are like talking shit saw this as an opportunity to uh you know gain fucking clout and they're getting hella clout they're getting clout from uh mainstream media they're getting clout from like philip defranco they're getting all of their fucking you know they're getting all their shit blasted all over the fucking timeline wait where was i happy hassan is crying taxes and Jeff Bezos being worth $150 billion and paying no taxes. Happy Hassan is crushing it. With others saying things like Hassan can't make bank as a streamer while professing leftist values? Is bitching about Bernie Sanders selling books and having a second house on the agenda next? Do we have time for AOC wearing an expensive dress on a magazine cover too? Get your fucking priorities straight. Others are- How do ads fit into this? I think those earn a significant- ah! I can't talk. Significant profit for you. Okay. I've talked about this extensively, but it bears repeating because I talk about it at the top of the hour uh, oftentimes. I'm not running it out right now. Don't worry. Okay. In order to be a partnered streamer with Twitch, you have to fucking get a contract. That contract dictates now the new contracts. I was one of the first like larger streamers that renegotiated their contract in order to continue being a partnered streamer on Twitch. That contract dictates that you have to fucking run ads. Okay. I negotiated that contract in a way where, like, I literally got the lowest ad density that I need to fucking have. The lowest ad density that I need to have, which was 60 seconds. That might even change in the future, by the way. Once my contract is up again, they're probably going to pump out even more ads. Okay? So I fucked myself over in an effort to make sure that my stream was not annoying with like hella fucking ads in it. And I've been talking about this for like an entire year and people still refuse. They're like, well, why did you take the contract? Well, why would I fucking not be partnered on Twitch? Why would I fuck myself over if my main goal is to reach far and fucking wide? It is such an idiotic thing to just be like, oh, I'm not going to, you know, 51k subs, okay lol. I, but you're not understanding. I need I need 
to fucking still be a partner streamer so I can have that. Like, well, that's so stupid. And ultimately, ultimately, I knew that no matter what happens, because of what they were trying to do before, they were like trying to fucking pump out ads. They were trying to pump out ads. They even did the fucking adpocalypse. If you remember, they did the blitz where they like tested out auto running ads. Okay. That ad contract, which I've given way more information on than probably anyone else. Okay, that ad contract also has a minimum amount of hours that I'm supposed to do. I obviously stream way more than the minimum hours, so it doesn't really fucking matter. But like, even people uh, like Moon Moon had to fucking run ads. Like he got a three minute ad break uh, uh, in his contract. Three minutes is what they wanted from me as well as the minimum. And I went back and forth. And luckily, uh, because of my agents, I was able to fucking lower it down to 60 seconds per hour as far as my ad density goes. Okay? This is my job. This is my job. I am an entertainer. I'm a Twitch streamer. Okay? I don't just talk about politics. But I'm a political Twitch streamer. Twitch chatter telling 51k sub Twitch streamer who has an agent for Twitch on how it works. Yeah, like, I don't know why people who have no comprehensive understanding or no knowledge about how any of this stuff works are getting their fucking information from a streamer who's not even fucking partnered. I'm sorry. Because uh, I feel like some of these uh, stem from like misinfo that you're you're uh, hearing from people, and and you're trying to backseat the situation when like even people like XQC who originally made fun of my ad contract now run ads. They all run ads, and they run so much more than I do, is they got higher ad density. And in the future, I might have to fucking run higher ad density as well. It's still significantly lower than TV and everywhere else. But I know for a fact that there's a lot of inventory on here that Twitch wants to fucking run. That Twitch feels is not like making enough money. I have no control over this, okay? Because it's not my platform. It's not something I can do. There is no coercion. If you don't want to subscribe, you don't have to. Okay. I don't know how you get through the back seating, Mad Love Man. I just, you know, I, I, I feel like part of my big problem is that I'm way too fucking transparent and I'm way too fucking open with all of my business. So people feel like, well, he's telling me all this shit. He's telling me all this shit, which means like, you know. I can have a say in this matter. You don't. And I even tell you how you can fucking avoid the ads. Like, literally, get a fucking VPN if you don't want to. Or get a fucking ad blocker. Christ. I don't understand why people complain so much about it on here. On other streams, I see nine ads. Whenever there's an ad break, I just end up leaving. Yeah, I mean, it's because people are too fucking comfortable just, like, backseating. That's, that's part of it. I communicate back and forth too much with the chat, so they think that they just have, like, you know, a lot of say over what's going on. Plus, people don't understand that every partner is different. Yeah. You defending this type of stuff enables the hypercriticism that you get that not many other streamers have to deal with. Well, for sure. Ultimately, like, most of my, if not nearly all of my revenue comes from that number up top, okay? And that's a big fucking number. 100%. It's purely fucking voluntary. But that number also allows me to maintain independence. That, like, I don't have to fucking take on advertisers that I don't want to take on. Rarely ever fucking do, like, ad streams and shit. So whenever people say, like, oh, he's just trying to maximize his fucking... Uh, he's trying to maximize uh, his, his revenue streams. Well, they're fucking dumb. If I wanted to maximize my revenue streams, I'd be pumping out a fucking ad from a company every goddamn day. So yeah, whenever, whenever the push comes to shove and people say like, well, why don't you move to another platform? I, I, I understand what the true purpose of why people say this sort of shit. It's because they just don't want me on this platform. That's it. That's literally it. You just don't want me to be on Twitch. You want me to go somewhere else. You want me to fucking, you know, 
move to a different platform. So I am not bothering you with my existence. But it's really fucking annoying that people just like it constantly bring up this narrative over and over again. It's, it's so fucking annoying, dude. Show us your tax returns. Like, this is what I'm saying. Like, why are you streaming all the time? Then show us your tax returns. Like, fuck off, dude. What a fucking psychotic take, dude. Show us your tax returns. Fuck you, dude. How much more invasive do you want to be, dude? Jesus fucking Christ, dude. That's not a joke, dude. That's not a joke. That's like literally the level of entitlement some of these fucking dumbasses have. He's more of a socialist than you. It's about accountability. You will call too true. You've, have you ever done a, a charity stream? Never seen it. You're done, Monka W. You are exploiting lonely people, Monka W. Gamer. Psycho. Ironically, subscribed psycho. Like, this is like a 14-year-old's delusion. What if you work with people to start a socialist streaming platform where rich watchers could give you money and you redistributed some of it among struggling watchers and streamers who grew their wallet, volunteer and actively promoting socialist, eco-friendly agendas? Could be neat, but maybe a lot of work. Like, literally every argument reduces to, why don't you stop what you're doing? Which is, like, literally very demonstrably successful in reaching out to as broad a fucking platform as possible and do something completely different. It's like, why don't you do that, motherfucker? I'm doing what I'm doing, and it's been pretty good. It's been pretty successful so far. And it's only getting larger. Like, how about I do my own thing, and then you do that, okay? Everyone constantly is just like, dude, I know that you have reached a tremendous amount of success by doing what you've done, which is part of the reason now which is part of the reason why we now unironically say like, oh, socialism is like so fucking profitable, so profitable. Like as though it, that was the fucking case ever in the history of fucking content creation until recently. And that people unironically point to me and like three other people that are actually very successful at doing this to be like, look at how profitable socialism is when like the overwhelming majority of like leftist streamers are not in the same circumstances, okay? And then they turn around and go, yeah, you should just stop doing that, okay? And instead, do something different. I don't know why they're so worried about me. It's just like, it's just like silly and a level of entitlement that exists only on this medium. All right, let's keep going. Anyone that spends 10 minutes looking at listings here can see how crazy the market is. Adding Hassan fights for workers everywhere, pays all his taxes, is very successful, and bought a house at the expense of no one. Hassan also eventually chiming in himself, saying pretty much what everyone's argument reduces to, I live in LA, the housing market here is fucked. Why is the argument that I should keep renting or that I should go gentrify somewhere else? Will this solve the problems? No, people are mad because lefty with house, that's it. Listen, if you're mad at me, tax the fuck out of people like me. Also seeming to know for the people that are like, why don't you give your money away? Saying I do donate to charity, but also saying that he doesn't think donating is also a long-term solution to larger issues with broken systems. And also noting that when rich people donate, it doesn't automatically absolve them of the, the way they got their money. But also with this story and then the debate that was happening, it opened up another question, which was why do people donate to massively successful streamers? People who you would- Because they see it as entertainment. That's it. They see it as entertainment and they're like, I want to pay for this entertainment. That's literally it. I've never heard this argument for like, why am I fucking giving money to Taylor Swift to listen to her music? Okay. And for people who say for attention, that's literally not true. You've been in here long enough to know that I'm not going to give you attention because you donated to me. I 90% of the time my TTS is fucking off. So you're wrong about that. You're literally wrong about that. But can you imagine people just being like, bro, why the fuck are people paying Taylor Swift money to listen to her fucking album, dude? And even on top of that, even fucking literally on top of that, on, like Taylor Swift is not even releasing the music for free on top. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I guess there are free ways that you can listen to it and you watch an ad, right? If you want to listen to Taylor Swift's music, but like, it's so stupid. So that's where that comes from. The only reason why, the only reason why it's a big number rather than a small number is because the other number right here is a big number, 44,000. That's it. 
if that number was 2,000, then that number up top on the right corner would be a smaller number. Comparably smaller number. That's it. But she actually works for that music. You recycle others content. Well, according to many people in here, at least 51,170 people in here, it's worthwhile. Like they appreciate my commentary. Okay. Over videos and numerous other forms of entertainment that I engage in over the course of a fucking eight hour period where I'm giving you as much content as I possibly can. Non fucking stop. Okay. Would expect to be multi-millionaires right and that's not a new conversation i mean there, there's the classic doctor disrespect line you got somebody in the chat says donating to a millionaire god you're so fucking stupid it's multi-millionaire multi but with that debate we saw another successful streamer by the name of pokimane explain why fans might donate to a streamer regardless of how much money that streamer may have saying people don't go as far to think how much does this person need my money it's People donate because they want someone's attention. And if anything, the richer someone becomes, the more valuable their attention becomes. This is why I don't like the attention narrative because, like, I don't fucking do it. Like, everyone knows that you're not getting attention. Like, you know you're not getting attention uh, just by donating or subscribing. In the process of this video, over the course of this video, like, 50 fucking people subscribed. They wrote a bunch of stuff in their subscription notifications, none of which was heard on the stream. And I did not read a single one. You only subscribe if you want to. That's it. I think this is like, we all know why. Because most people don't, you know, we're not all spent. You have the badge and see more important in chat though? Really? You don't have a badge? Once again, you probably have not been in this community for long enough. So you will learn in time. Everyone in this community knows, especially if they've been here for a very long time, that like I pay more attention to fucking random chatters. The reason why this is here and the reason why I've been doing this and responding to people nonstop and it's a part of my content, it's a part of like what I believe is the best way to uh, uh, engage in community building. Okay? Is because... This is the most equalizing factor, okay? Chat is the most equalizing factor. I've been here I've been here for years, I'm just saying. I've been here for years, man. You've been here for years, then you should fucking know that. If you chat long enough, I know what the fuck you're, you know, I I like I always talk about it like this. If you bring a lot to the table as a chatter, and you do, if you're interesting, unique, if you're, uh, you know, funny, like, I'm going to fucking notice that. Attention, by the way, could be uh, for some streamers, you know. XQC has a different approach. I don't think he pays attention to the TTS, but the TTS is, like, literally a part of the content, right? Your stream has been more successful at making money and nothing else. It's entertaining for sure, but there is not actual intelligent analysis of nuanced topics here. It's a massive circle jerk ever since you stopped having people that disagree with you on the show and your numbers got so big that getting beat the fuck out live on Twitch would do you more harm than good. The clout strat worked and now you can coast a few years easy. The reason why I don't have fucking random dipshits on here is because there's a fuckload of random dipshits that want to be on here that just like, you know, say whatever the fuck they want to. Pog Champus is one of the oldest fucking community members, by the way. 27-month subscriber. Everyone has a different reason for why they uh, create content in the ways that they do. I believe that that kind of debate lord attitude absolutely fucking manifests a really toxic opinion on, on how content is created. And the community just fucking is incredibly combative. I can pinpoint the exact time when I decided, like, this is really fucked up and I don't want to do it. And I still debate every now and then. Up next, things about to get heated. The issue is debate returns. Hassan Piker on the left, Michael Knowles on the right. I don't know if I'm quite ready for this, but here we go. Here's our panel this week. Two men who are almost the exact same age, who are both very savvy online, both live close to each other physically, but live on different planets ideologically. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's start with the role of government. Hassan, 
In responding to coronavirus, should we be doing more in terms of government than we're doing right now? What do you see as the role of government right now? I think that the government has fallen short in nearly every capacity. And then, of course, we need to be doing more. I don't even understand what we could potentially do less do they not remember the gray name days? Literally an onslaught of non-sub, non-prime chatters talking to you and locking you in conversations for hours. I mean, it still happens. But once again, debates are ultimately not very productive. Especially because the ultimate goal comes from the entertainment of blood sport itself. Rather than sitting out, sitting down and like, you know, looking at, uh, looking at ideas in a more valuable and... Uh, in a more entertaining capacity. Everyone has a different method of change. Mine revolves around nailing issues rather than fucking constantly rehearsing three fucking talking points that you can drop quickly on a fucking debate. Okay? Constantly looking at fucking studies to reinforce uh, the, the point of view that I'm going to take on a fucking particular debate. If you like that kind of content, you know, go off. Go watch. There's plenty of fucking incredible uh, uh, debaters out there. Just go watch them. But if you think that like uh, testing your ideas in the marketplace of ideas over uh, someone who may be more rhetorically gifted than you, but not necessarily correct, then I don't know. This is not the place for you. Spend money logically 24-7. We do things for other reasons. And personally, my opinion on these, people always hound me for this, whether they're, they're looking for a reason to hit me or, or they're just genuinely interested. Regarding tips and donations in general, I actually find myself agreeing with Pokimane. Some people want to support, some, uh, especially for streams, they want some attention or feeling that they're, they're a part of the community. But also regarding the Hassan Piker situation, because I've gotten a lot of questions as far as what my opinion is, I personally find it to be a nothing story at this point. I think like if you don't want to like Hassan Piker, dislike him because of the, the things that he says, dislike him because of his uh, points of view that, that clash with yours. But I don't personally find there to be anything egregious about owning instead of renting when you have the ability and option. Even if we want to live in a different society or change society for what we seem to be the better, we still have to exist in it as it is. And from the outside looking in, I don't know the ins and outs of Hassan Piker's business. I don't see a ton of people being exploited. I see an audience that is supporting with him. He's rather transparent with the number of paid subscribers that he has. But also with that, you know, it's the Philip DeFranco show. I gave you the story, now some of my opinion. And whether you agree or disagree with me, I'd love to know your thoughts on this. All right, one, regarding the Pokemon story, I think that's interesting, but also two, regarding, regarding a Hassan Piker, are you on the side of, no, this proves that he's a hypocrite. I've seen a number of right-wing commentators saying, like, this proves that he's just LARPing. It's disingenuous, or no, are you on the other side of, you, you don't think that there is actually a story here, that this is just an attempt to hit Hassan and win political points, whether you're a far left or a uh, conservative, or maybe are you somewhere in between, like, you're not bothered by it, but you feel like something's off. Any and all thoughts, I'd love to know what you're thinking in those comments down below. But from that, I want to take a quick second to thank the fans all right, there it is. Wow, now is the Vinci's Sexy Phil's production. Lol, Phil waking up early on vacay. If an eco-socialist myself, I honestly don't think I signed anything wrong. But yeah, he's in the circles I listen to, but I don't listen to the streams. I listen to the new shows on YouTube. Hassan is like a gnat of a millionaire. Multi-millionaire should be given higher taxes for sure. And I'm going to side with Hassan on this. The U.S. housing market is fucked. The only thing this Hassan story exposes him is him and his family's address. Now their safety is in danger just because people want to rant about their jealousy. This is fucking true. That is actually one of the wildest things is that like, <laughs> I got doxxed to hundreds of thousands of people and it made fucking national news. And like the only thing people are still talking about is like, uh, whether or not I'm a fucking hypocrite. It's so crazy. It, it literally is just completely insane. Not even hundreds of thousands, millions of people. And, and also on top of that, people are fucking mad at me too on top of that. Where they're like, yeah, fuck you.